My guest today on ET Now is someone who's in charge of a very, very important function of the Congress party, a function that was perhaps lacking before he came in. Randeep Singh Surjewala is doing the impossible act of communicating with a country that is mired with social media that's biased. He's doing the impossible act of delivering a message that's not always easy to deliver. Thank you very much for being with us. And I think my intro has kind of uh, set the stage for this. You're doing an important job for the Congress party, which is communications. Is this the toughest part of what you've done in your political life? You, want, you know, you've, you've contested six elections, you've been in public life, but communications is something that the Congress was sorely lacking. Communications oh. is an extremely important paradigm for any political party, more oh. so for the Congress party. Oh. We have always believed in delivering, not uh, projecting. Oh. We have always believed in, in doing rather than showing. We have always believed in going ahead and doing the, and uh, implementing the correct thing hmm. rather than spending 4,600 crore like the present Prime Minister in selling it to the people. But do you Congress, believe it's now become an important part of I, politics? I think in politics it's also important to tell the people hmm. for they are stakeholders what you are doing. Hmm. Not in, in, the, in the current BJP Modiji style of spending uh, 5,000 crore on publicity, but yes, communicating and letting people participate. That's something that Congress has started doing more recently. But Mr. Surjewala, how easy or difficult is it to communicate in this age of social media where, you know, everybody's trigger happy, uh, a tweet creates a furor, uh, it becomes a national debate, a national discourse. How easy or difficult is communication and politics in this age of social media? While it's easy to send out your message through the social media mediums mm. that you have and more than one, mm. it's also becoming that, more, that much more difficult for the simple reason. Mm. There is a troll army that the ruling dispensation runs. Mm. That troll army, for example, has targeted uh, Shushma Savrajji more recently. That troll army is followed by none less than Prime Minister of the country. Mm. That troll army was not admonished either by the BJP officially, even after Shushma Savrajji conducted a poll, mm. nor did Prime Minister chose to comment about it. They threatened one of my spokesperson's 10-year-old daughter with rape. Mm. They threatened journalists with rape and murder. They put up pictures of journalist families. They threatened none less than Mr. Arun Shuri, who is a BJP leader and whose son is suffering from cerebral palsy. Mm in the manner and in the filthy language that they did. Mm. Simple question to ask for by every citizen of itself, of oneself mm. is, is this the kind of political discourse and political dispensation that you want or do you want a change? I think time has come to set down a new narrative mm. and it started with what Shushma ji did very boldly. I must, despite the political differences, I must say, mm. and it started with what my colleague Priyanka Chaturvedi uh, uh, did by taking a stance publicly. You know, I, I kind of congratulate both women for the stance that they took. But let me be the devil's advocate. We did a huge debate on uh, this entire issue on ET Now, and the BJP spokesperson turns around and says, and there's some merit in this, that for every troll that's trolling uh, the anti-BJP faction, there are enough and more, uh, you know, from the Congress who are also doing this. You know, there's some person called Abhishek Mishra who put out tweets saying that I'm going to use cuss words against Prime Minister Modi. Why is the Congress not uh, clamping down on them? So the question really is, has this become, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, an eye for an eye, a life for life? I mean, what? where is the social media going to lead us to? No, but that's a fair question to ask. Mm. Every day, but it's wrong to say mm. that the Congress party mm. uh, or Congress leaders are doing so. Mm. May mm. I just point out, sure. Congress president threw out mm. and suspended a senior leader of the party for using cuss words against none less than the Prime Minister right. during Gujarat election, mm. Mr. Mani Shankar Iyer. Mm. Mm. Did uh, Pr Prime Minister Modi do so? when uh, Congress president was called uh, children of Changez Khan and, and all kind of obscene words were used. Mm. Congress president, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, has made it very clear. He will respect the prime minister and he expects every congressman to do so. Mm. We will not tolerate obscene language against our opponents. Mm. We have set a standard, we have set a discourse and we will not waver from it. You know, 
while we are talking about social media and while we are talking about responsible communication, I think it's only fair that I ask you this question. There was a recent survey by the Reuters Foundation on a country for women. Now that was a survey that was based on perception and no data and yet the opposition including the Congress party, including your president chose to tweet about it, chose to go to town about this. Is that what responsible communication is going to be about? Because I mean are we worse off than a Syria and a Saudi Arabia? Important issue is oh. how are women treated in this country? Oh. If a journalist was to tweet or write against Prime Minister Modi, oh. will her house or his house be attacked and will she be called? If I may use the word, it's a cuss word, a slut oh. and be threatened with rape. Oh. Will a Congress spokesperson's 10 year old daughter be threatened with rape? Oh. Important issue is that children are raped and, uh, and uh, you know, treated in a manner oh. that is horrific. It sh sh shocks everybody's conscience. True. Women are treated in a particular fashion in mm. this country. Mm. We have seen the kind of brutalities against women that are unheard of. True. True. Yet, a government mm. that brought down another government based on, on Nirbhya, mm. where accountability should have been fixed and was fixed mm. by the then Congress government, uh, chooses to stay mum. You can troll the, the union foreign minister mm. and, and prime it. minister will follow those trolls and not say a word. The Bharatiya Janta party will choose not to speak a word about it. Let me ask you the other question and I think you know besides these tweets and besides the Facebook posts and uh, people saying whatever in social media and otherwise there has to be a more potent political narrative. What is the counter narrative that you and the collective opposition has to offer at this stage? It just can't be anti-Modi, it has to be something more potent, right? Absolutely. Nobody is saying that there is an anti-Modi narrative alone. Mm -hmm. Important issue is that the issues of governance in this country have floundered and failed. Mm -hmm. Important issue is that issues of jobs, issues of agriculture, issues of economic uh, progress, mm. issues of social harmony which is the foundation of all progress have all withered away. We have a narrative that is set on a daily basis uh, which is a narrative based on the divisions of caste, mm. divisions of religion and they continue to sell that narrative over and over. Can only a narrative of division and hatred, mm. can only a narrative of ethnic cleansing either of a caste or a, or a particular religious denomination be the narrative for development and progress of a country? The answer is clearly no. Absolutely. So all we are asking Mr. Modi, Mr. Modi where are 2 crore jobs that you promised every year? Mm. There should have been 8 crore jobs, there have not even been 8 lakh jobs. Mm. What happens to the good governance model? What happens to the uh, minimum government maximum governance model? Right. What happens to the economic prosperity? What happens to the agriculture where 62 uh, crore people are dependent? The truth is that he has no answers mm. and that's why Congress party and other opposition parties have come together to set the alternative model of governance mm. that once UPA set out and, and of course we made some mistakes and consequently were voted out. Issues that you point out, that you speak about in your press conferences and then you send press releases on are very important. Where are the jobs? Where is economic development? What's happening to maximum governance, minimum government? Those are very important issues. But these issues sometimes don't get highlighted and which is why I ask this question. Is 2019 going to be then about Hitler versus Aurangzeb? Is this going to be about Chinggis Khan and Pakistan? Or is this going to be about potent issues and as a responsible opposition, what are you going to do to bring the narrative back to issues that matter, issues of everyday Indians, everyday life? For Mr. Gandhi, for Congress party and I am sure for other friends in the opposition, hmm. it doesn't matter whether um, Mr. Modi choose to call us Hitler or X or X or Y or Z, hmm. cuss words as also character assassination has become the DNA of BJP. For that's how they divert the debate. That's how they derail the uh, narrative. Mm. We will continue to ask questions of Mr. Modi and those questions will be, you promised cost plus 50 percent to farmer by giving a pittance in the last year mm. uh, or, or when you are about to go to polls, increase of 100, 100, 200 rupees, are you going to change the face of agriculture? The answer is clearly no. Mm. 
what happened to the creation of jobs which come from economic prosperity, which come from a lot of MSME sector getting prominence and consequent uh, and consequent march forward, mm. which come from not the progress of five or six or a dozen industrialists, mm. but a large number of entrepreneurs springing up to drive the economy, mm. which which also come from the march onwards of the agrarian sector for that happens to be the biggest employment generator. Mm. Has Mr. Modi done so? The answer you can ask of any trader, any shopkeeper and businessman, the answer is no. Mr. Surjewala, I have two, actually three specific questions on some of the issues that you raised. Jobs. Uh, I think Mr. Modi's Coal plank was never going to be a reality. How was he thinking he's going to create two crowd jobs? Because job creation is going to get increasingly tough. There is artificial intelligence, there's machine learning and all of that. What is your narrative on job? It's a it's an extremely challenging thing. Mm. Uh, but the answer is rather simple. Mm. What did we do in the past? We ensured that mm. the schemes like Mahatma Gandhi Narega mm. Mm. and a good price and a consistently uh, consistent increase in the minimum support price of agrarian commodities hmm. put more money in the hands of the rural labor right the uh, small farmer and marginal farmer hmm. and consequently the rural indebtedness also to an extent went away True. so it was a cumulation of multiple factor because 62 crore people are still there out hmm. there hmm. the next challenge would be to ensure that the, um, uh, that the micro and small enterprises, mm. they grow in an exponential form in India. There is a lot of talent out there. Mm. There are a lot of entrepreneurs out there. They are just waiting to be found and given the right incentive. True. If we can do that, mm. they can create lots of jobs and that is an answer. These two sectors, movement you address and movement the economy cups keeps coming up from bottom up. That's the approach that you have to follow. Jobs will automatically come. I also want to talk to you about agriculture. And as somebody who comes from an agricultural belt, you will understand this. You know, it was never going to be possible to double farm incomes by 2022. And I think all of us knew that even when that announcement was made. But what is the way out? How do you bring prosperity back to India's farms? Because if you if you see the kind of holding that farmers have, it's less than one hectare for a lot majority of our farmers. How is agriculture then going to be more remunerative? How is it going to be a profitable exercise? And does any government, whether it's your government or this government or whoever comes to power, has to think beyond the beyond sloganeering in agriculture? Well. Uh, agriculture would be a would be always remain the mainstay mm. for major, considering the number sure. of people involved. Yes. What did the UPA do and where did Mr. Modi falter? Mm. If you look at the UPA's track record, the minimum support price for procurement of agrarian goods mm. was increased by what twelve percent every year. Mm. Everybody said that has sure. caused uh, that has that is the source of some inflation. Mm. Mm. Well, some inflation. Limited controlled inflation also leads to some economic progress, sure, which, which sure. we all know. Where UPA felt that there was a need to one time waiver of uh, and ensure that the farmer was rid of indebtedness, we did so. Mm. The third important thing that we did was we opened up export market. Just to give you a figure, sure. mm. the export of agrarian commodities during these four years of Mr. Modi has gone down by 10 billion US dollars. Mm. And the import of agriculture commodities have gone up by 9.3 billion US dollars. Mm. Mm. So agri agriculture has suffered a loss of 20 billion US dollars. Mm. That's what needs to be undone. Schemes like Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, there the facts are that farmer got 5600 crore of compensation mm. and insurance companies made 14800 crore of profit mm. so whom were they meant for thirdly the uh, irrigation schemes mm. those areas which are climatically different or diverse there has been no sort of cross connection what mr gandhi in the congress envisages mm. and which we projected in karnataka build an agriculture corridor running across climatic zones of the country. Mm. That way the goods and services can be harmoniously linked. Also ensure mm. that uh, e-agriculture market 
is widely available to the farmer and consequently he can he or she can sell their produce anywhere in the country uh, but to talk to you back on communications and back on pure political elections uh, how is communications different under uh, your present president rahul gandhi versus how it was uh, under mrs gandhi does he understand communications more because a lot of people are now talking about how smart his tweets are can some smart tweets resurrect uh, you know uh, resurrect a politician who's been under constant attack see mr gandhi has been uh, targeted mm. uh, in a selective fashion by our opponents in the bjp mm. not that it deters him from speaking truth to power at all mm. important issue in communication is what are you communicating are you only trying to set narrative and agenda or are you speaking something meaningful mm. that is uh, in that interest the young in the country mm. or the businesses in the in, uh, country or the common person on the street i think what mr gandhi is doing currently mm. is that he is addressing issues directly which many world leaders have started doing uh, cutting across sometimes the traditional media true which reports or doesn't report depending on which side uh, of the fence you are in the in the present day world mm. to be fair to everybody so mr gandhi is speaking directly he is conversing directly with people he is reaching out mm. he is speaking on diverse range of issues and he is traveling across the country mm. i think that's what communications is if you see mahatma gandhi was one of the finest communicator because he They traveled were, all the time because because he traveled and communicated there were no other means nowadays we have the benefit of social media mm. so mr gandhi does communicate through it but he believes in 101 communications more than anything else but mr sujal i think i need to ask you a little bit of an uncomfortable question here and i know the congress party has leveled several corruption allegations against ministers in this government and, and party presidents of the bjp now the reality is that while you know it, it does create a headline and and people get talking about this for a while a lot of people you know step back and say that congress has no moral authority to preach uh, preach us on corruption because you know uh, you presided over a very tainted government which is which was voted out in office how are you going to battle that charge how are you going to battle that allegation i think that allegation is has been manufactured and repeated like the gobbles truth by bjp multiple times mm. over mm. if you look at it mm. if there was corruption dr manmohan singh removed mr a raja there were allegations of corruption mm. Mm. Mr A Raja has now st now stands exonerated not by us mm. during BJP tenure by uh, in, on a charge sheet filed by CBI mm. which says that Mr A Raja was right and there was no corruption it was manufactured by BJP so the entire 2G scam mm. has faltered the only one who's benefited is Mr Vinod Rai since he is the bank bureau chief now you look at uh, uh, CWG scam mm. I think you will find that uh, Mr. Kalmadi was removed from our party, mm. and he has not been able to come back since. Mm. Only on a whisper of the CBI chief showing an affidavit to the law minister, mm. Mr. Ashwani Kumar was asked to step down. Mm. Mr. Pawan Kumar Bansal did not even have any allegation against him. There was an allegation against his relative. That's right. He was asked to step down. Mm. Mr. Ashok Chavan. only because there was an allegation was asked to step down as chief minister of maharashtra, maharashtra. Mm. how many people has mr modi sacked for corruption the the uh, the uh, bottom line of corruption lies at his door steps mm. his name figured in the sahara bidla diary forget about what the supreme court said should the prime minister not have come forward and said well i am clean i am ready to uh undergo any test hmm. just like uh, just like sita mata and i'm because i'm absolutely clean speak and span but no he didn't he, he chose not to speak a word his union ministers hmm. his uh, chief ministers they have or they have been serious allegations of corruption hmm. what about the 36000 crore pds scam in chatisgarh hmm. what about the vyapam scam of shivraj singh chauhan when he was medical education minister 50 people have died what about the chikki scam the tender scam and the latest land scam in maharashtra mm. what about vasundhra raje ji mm. giving an affidavit to uk authorities in favor of lalit, lalit modi, modi the fugitive let's talk about issues that matter and i'm going to quickly wrap this up with political uh, elections that are up front madhya pradesh and rajasthan uh, there is a lot of pressure 
uh, on both sides, on the ruling dispensation as well as the opposition, because for them it's do or die to stay in power at this narrative. For you, these have been your strong bastions and how do you get them back? Uh, and then the other question that people turn around and ask is, are you going to bet on fresh blood, young blood? Are you going to go back to experience? Uh, how crucial are Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan both as far as cues for 2019 are concerned? Well, the three states of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh are extremely crucial for mm -hmm. us. They always have been. And uh, we believe that time for change is here. Mm. The way by-elections in these states have proved, the way people's anger is writ large, against the three chief ministers and let me say there is equal anger in these states against Prime Minister Modi. Mm. So it will be a deadly combination of an unpopular chief minister of BJP mm. and an unpopular Prime Minister going in the field. We hope to win all the three states including retaining the fourth state of Mizoram so you and you will find that the narrative would have changed them. So while these are the states where you are the principal opposition and it's going to be a binary contest between you and the BJP, if you look at other states in India, whether it's a Karnataka where you've, you've, you've chosen to be the junior ally or even a state as populous as Uttar Pradesh that has often been very instrumental in the Congress forming a government, uh, why has the Congress party allowed itself to be relegated to the margins, to, the, to, be, to be a very, uh, you know, a mute spectator of what goes on in the state politics? I mean, there is this talk today, if the SP and the BSP come together, the Congress may not even get 10 seats to contest from. I'm just trying to understand, how does that fit in with the overall narrative of being the fulcrum of this anti-Modi, anti-BJP bloc for 2019? You ask a very valid question. Uh, Uttar Pradesh for years together. It's not something that's happened in two or three or four years. Uttar Pradesh has been a matter of manner of some challenge for the Congress party now for over two decades, True. two and a half, three decades. That's something that we will need to correct eventually. In the immediate uh, 2019 elections, there are two issues before the Congress party as also before every sane Indian. Hmm. Think of yourself and hanker for power think of the country and be ready to walk hand in hand with people whom you do not necessarily always agree with mm. on larger for larger national cause. That's what Mr. Rahul Gandhi is doing. Will those state alliances to last state. though? Because experiments in the past haven't been very successful. State to state, we mm. are trying to build mm. and consolidate people on certain ideas and policies. Mm. And those ideas and policies are intrinsic to India's foundational values. Simple question to ask is, can jingoism replace nationalism? Mm. Are you on the side of uh, chest thumping or you are on the, on the side of doing something meaningful for the common man? Can merely rhetoric and jumlas run this country mm. or do you have to do intrinsic hard work to deliver what you promise? Currently, this country is running on jumlas, mm. on jingoism mm. and on chest thumping. For how long can we last on those uh, self-made achche din for we really need sachche din? But you know, Mr. Surjewala, because you had communications for the Congress, I have to end with asking you a last question and going back to jingoism. You know, the Congress had very powerful slogans, Garibi hatao, Aam Admi ka haath Congress ke saath. It's a space that the BJP seems to have occupied with its achche din or with its sahi niyat saaf vikas. What is the counter narrative? What is the counter big slogan from the Congress going to be? It can't be bas ek saal, can it? Absolutely no. Hmm. Uh, for example, in our last plenary session, hmm. we said badlav ka waqt hai. Hmm. Hmm. Time for change has come. Hmm. And that change is for the better. The change is for the truth. The change is for is is meaningful mm. the change is transformative and the change that will reach the bottom rung of every indian mm. and will really propel india uh, as a powerful country in the in this century that's the kind of change that people are looking for so people are looking for a truthful and meaningful change and that's why it's badlav ka waqt so it shall be achche din versus sachche din on that note thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us sir